Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Eddie Trustovich. Uh, I'm the founder of this program, Innovation Nation. And this evening, we have the pleasure of hosting 10 startups from Bosnia Herzegovina that have gone through an intensive program. We have an incredible keynote speaker for you. You'll hear from some of the investors uh, that we've lined up for this evening. You'll also have a chance to network. You'll have a chance to watch the students graduate from this program, and it's all going to be a whole lot of fun. So IEEE Innovation Act Nation actually has its roots in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Although this program is quite global, and I'll tell you a little bit about why it's so global at the moment, its humble beginnings were at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering at the University of Sarajevo. So in your top left-hand corner there, you can see a photo from the first Congress, the first Innovation Nation, uh, about 100 or 120 individuals gathered from all over Bosnia and Herzegovina at the time and the first event was held there. And from that event, we started to pivot, just like the startups are pivoting tonight and they've been pivoting for the last 10 or 12 weeks, our event and our structure and the way we deliver the program has pivoted over the years. In 2017, we stayed in Sarajevo in the middle photo there. This is at the International Birch University in Sarajevo. At this event, we had a record number of attendees, over 440, I believe, in total over the two or three days of the event. And in 2018 and 19, we traveled further. We went to Banja Luka as well. And so we finally come to today. And today, as you know, we're not in any city. We're virtual, we're global. There are plenty of advantages to this particular approach, but the program essentially has pivoted from being face-to-face -to, -face to being online. And one of the biggest advantages of doing it this year online is that we have international guests that are able to join us quite readily with no problems, with no restrictions on travel and so on. So there are advantages to being online, but the program has really grown year in, year out. And the original roots of this program were we wanted to develop grassroots training for innovation entrepreneurship for young people in Bosnia and Herzegovina. When we first started, we started focusing heavily on the STEM uh, domain. But as you can see, you will see this year, the program has encompassed individuals from all walks of life, because as we know, Every good startup deserves to have an interdisciplinary team. In 2020, the program took on a whole new shape. As I said, we went online. The application process was quite lengthy. We had over 160, 70 applications this year from individuals uh, at university, young professionals working in companies from all over the country. And because the program is very selective, we chose approximately 50 of the best applications that arrived. We were looking for individuals that were dedicated. We were looking for individuals that were driven, had a passion and wanted to explore. And these individuals were selected based upon those principles and then participated in this 10 week accelerated course. In this accelerated course, the students had the chance to do all sorts of things and you'll hear about that in a second. But what I really wanna highlight here is that all of these individuals were carefully handpicked to participate in this program because of their dedication and because of their drive. The team that delivered this year's program uh, was comprised of myself, my colleagues, Dr. Timur Hukic and Daniel Hook. And these individuals were largely responsible for delivering a bulk of the program. So I wanna take this opportunity while I'm on screen here to personally thank Timur Hukic and Daniel Hook for doing an incredible job in delivering the program this year, for spending hundreds of hours delivering the program weekends, weeknights, recording materials, etc. I couldn't have wished for better assistance in the program. In actual fact, I felt like I was the assistant and they were doing the major delivery. So Timur, Daniel, thank you very much for all your contributions in the 2020 program. And one of the exciting things about the 2021 program, which I can give you a heads up on, is that we plan to teach the teachers and in such, we will take the top five or six students from this year's class and they will become assistants in the program in 2021. So we are ensuring that we have a continuation of knowledge sharing and teaching experiences throughout the program. Now, that being said, I'm going to give the words to Timur and Daniel, who will briefly tell you about what the 2020 program looked like in detail before I come back and finish us off in this section. Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much, Adi, for this kind introduction. Uh, it was really amazing working with you and Daniel and with all our IEEE Innovation Nation participants. 
I must say that this was really demanding and challenging coursework, coursework especially to finish it in just 10 weeks. So I would like to congratulate to all our students for completing it. And now I'll just briefly explain actually how it all worked. So every Saturday from 9 to 12, we had workshops. And prior to these workshops, we recorded video content that students went through. And this content was, of course, connected with the topic that we are covering this week. Uh, this allowed us to be more practical and to fo focus on communication during workshops. So everything was held via Zoom and we were in the main breakout room explaining what tasks and exercises uh, our students need to do. Then they went to the breakout rooms and did this task as a team. Then we would return them to the main room and let them pitch and present and discuss and get feedback from everyone. So it was really interactive learning. Uh, we also had uh, industry lecture. So every Wednesday from seven to nine, we would bring uh, top notch experts from industry connected with the topic that we are covering. So if you're doing something connected with prototyping, we would have experts on prototyping that would go through uh, with the content with our students and allow them to ask questions and answers and improve in this segment as well. And lastly, we had uh, our lovely mentors, uh, 17 of them across uh, eight different countries. So after week four, uh, students had opportunity to schedule a meeting three times per week with mentors, and they would get uh, advices and suggestions how to pursue their startup and how to continue with their goal. And they get all the help with whatever thing, with everything they needed. Uh, finishing with this, uh, this is the content on the right side. This is what we covered. It was combination. We were not focused only on creating startups, but as well, uh, teaching part, learning parts. We wanted students, even if this startup particularly that we're going to present today fails because startup always fail. Uh, majority of them fail. We wanted them to get the knowledge behind and be ready to be entrepreneurs in the life and continue with this spirit. So now I will leave off to my colleague, Daniel which will, uh, who will explain how IEEE Innovation Nation Library functions and how we actually expanded this program, not only in Bosnia, but with, in other countries as well. Thank you very much, Timur, and uh, a very early good morning from Melbourne here. Uh, so as a part of this program and as a part of the growing network that really started from the, the first Bosnian Innovation Nation, this year, we had the chance to contribute to what's called the IEEE Innovation Nation Library. Now, this was a uh, perhaps a lucky coincidence or some you know, fortuitous timing that we were developing digital content and talking about this kind of a blended learning strategy in a year with COVID. So what we ended up doing this year in conjunction with all of the other countries that run Innovation Nation is create videos and workshops and a bunch of content that is going to be in one uh, central library that all of the innovation nations may use to run their programs. So myself and Timur, as, apart from uh, running workshops for this, this particular cohort that you're going to be hearing from tonight, uh, we also had the chance to you know, make our own set of videos, pass our own knowledge into this, this library and and develop our own concepts, but also learn from the other people who were, uh, you know, a part of the Innovation Nation. Now, in this year, we're not the only Innovation Nation running. We have four Innovation Nations running at different times. So they're in uh, Sri Lanka, Jamaica, and Malaysia this year as well. And they're using, you know, very similar content, very similar uh, approaches to what they're doing, but they're each applying their own specific local context and generating their own Innovation Nation. But if I remember correctly, there's actually been a number of applications from something like 17 countries uh, to run their own innovation nation this year. So clearly there's something going on here that's quite special, quite important. And the future for innovation nation really is to scale up and make this type of learning, this type of engagement, uh, something that is you know, accessible and essential for every you know, young professional uh, who wants to experience something a little bit different to the standard day-to-day -day professional landscape in their country. So it's been an absolute pleasure this year working with an international team. Uh, something that we've all become quite adept at is working online, and certainly we don't see this going away into the future. So having a good online repository of information, such as the Innovation Nation Library, and having good uh, online 
<coughs> excuse me, skills where you can work effectively on Zoom. You can work in multidisciplinary teams from different countries. Uh, they're all the amazing skills that we've developed this year, and it's been uh, a joy to work with the teams, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing these presentations tonight. I'll pass back to Eddie now to continue the presentation. Thank you, Daniel and Timur. So I'll briefly just uh, say a huge thank you to people that have made this program very special this year. And uh, you might be wondering why the countries that, have, that Daniel just mentioned, it seems a little bit random. The whole concept of Innovation Nation is focused on developing entrepreneurial flair and entrepreneurial skill sets and competencies in developing economies or emerging economies, as some people like to prefer, prefer to call them. And so the three criteria for selection of these countries originally was low GDP, low GDP per capita, high youth unemployment. And some of these other countries that are applying obviously don't fit every of these categor categories, but they also have to have a strong volunteer base. This is a 100% volunteer based run program. No one is getting any huge uh, sums of money to run this program. We're all volunteering. And the reason that we're volunteering is because we're able to then uh, drive the program from passion. And that's one of the main reasons why some of the faces that you will see that have made contributions to the program this year, we're able to make those contributions because they're also driven by passion. And the Innovation Nation industry speakers, which spoke once a week to our students, you can see come from all walks of life, young, senior, junior, and everything else in between, different experiences. I'll just highlight a couple of names here on the top right-hand corner. You can see Professor Barry Shoup. He's the 2016 IEEE president. He's a Brigadier General and a professor at the West Point Military Academy. And he's now the Dean of Engineering at Cooper Union and one of the most prestigious uh, undergraduate education institutions in the United States. Uh, we also had uh, individuals like Samuel Schuler, who's considered one of the rising stars in the finance industry in Europe. And we've had people like Alexander Groth, who actually is one of the key drivers of design thinking in Europe and one of the original guys that started the concept with the Americans uh, quite a long time. Uh, Samir Tseric there as well, you'll hear about later on as an investor, Professor Mizutich at Syracuse University, and a couple of young guns from Bosnia, Almedin Beganovic, Milan Kusmuk, uh, who spoke about their journey in this whole program, Professor Sheikh Fayaz, who joined us uh, from Zhejiang University in China, uh, Marco Hrelia, who's currently in Canada, Amela Meshak, who's in uh, uh, Seattle at the moment. So very, very diverse group of people uh, doing some incredible stuff, and Professor Mirko Hegedic as well there speaking about uh, agile methodologies. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank them for taking out their time and speaking to our students, inspiring them, giving them different points of view on how to develop products and services, the finances, the marketing, and everything else in between from their particular perspective. Now, Innovation Nation also wouldn't be what it is today without coaches and mentors. And again, coaches and mentors, as you can see, we have 17 different coaches and mentors from different parts of the world, from Australia, from Bosnia, Germany, Pakistan, uh, you name it. Some of those individuals were also speakers. And these individuals made a big effort to coach our students. So we developed a booking system. Uh, students were able to book these individuals for a few hours a week, consult them on various topics, and really help complement what they were learning in the classroom, during the workshops, during the industry lectures, as well as the self-paced content, which is available in the digital library. So a very comprehensive approach. And I do want to just read out their names and thank them personally again for their contributions in the program and the time they dedicated. So Adela Kadiric there uh, from Germany, Admir Mucinovic from Australia, Adnan Berberovic from Sweden, Almedin Beganovic from Bosnia, Professor Bettina Maish from Germany, Jenata Schitten from Austria, Edita Maric from Bosnia, Iva Djikic from Bosnia, Kenan Kurdic from Bosnia, Mr. Khaled Khan from Pakistan, uh, Marko Hreda from Canada, Milan Kusmuk from Bosnia Skavina, Mirza Duranovic from Bosnia Skavina, Maurice Vesely from Germany as well, Pavlina Vujovic, who's also in Germany, Samir Pekas uh, in the UK, and Salma Duovic in the United States. Thank you very much for all your contributions. Uh, the program is forever indebted to you but we believe that you had just as much fun as the students did uh, learning from you. You could have some insights in terms of their directions as well. The teams that are pitching tonight, we will talk more about them later on, but we have 10 very exciting presentations for you. And I'm sure the students are very keen to tell you. 
I'm not going to delve too much into the details of what they're going to present because that's part of the excitement for this evening. We also have some incredible investors, uh, industry partners who are willing to put in finances to help these businesses get started. We also have awards and we will really endeavor to be as transparent with that process as possible. And we'll talk about that later on. This is just to give you a heads up on who's involved this evening. I have the pleasure of introducing some of our Innovation Nation judges and investors for this evening. I'll go through them one by one, but you can see we have a very exciting lineup of international, local, and individuals who are local, but international in many ways as well. And I'll talk about them in a second. Our first investor for this evening is Mr. Adnan Berberovic. Uh, he's one of the chairman of the board at SIBA, the Swedish Development Agency. Uh, he's a consultant there as well. Uh, he's big in finances. He knows a lot about this stuff. He's been involved for the last few years in this program. So we welcome him back. Adnan, welcome to the investment panel and thank you for your time. Ms. Amra Omeragic, she's a senior investment officer at Finance in Motion. I also want to thank Amra for helping us organize additional funding from uh, the EFSE, uh, Entrepreneurial Fund. So we have additional funding there. Amra, thank you very much for being here with us this evening. Okay, unfortunately, Mr. Amir Bukvic has come down with COVID and he's not the only one. We're in a very difficult time at the moment. Uh, he won't be able to join us this evening, but I do want to thank Mr. Amir Bukvic for showing great support for this program, uh, for wanting to be here with us this evening, for attempting to be here with us this evening. But from what I hear, he's just come out of hospital post COVID and he's recovering. So he's not able to join us this evening, but he will have a recording and of course, he will have an opportunity to invest into the startups post event. So the CEO of Boston Bank International, uh, someone who's very influential is not able to join us this evening. A very warm welcome to Christina Tama. She's joining us as the senior program officer at VentureWell. Uh, VentureWell is also uh, the leading organization of the GIST program and they're an official partner of Bosnia and Herzegovina Futures Foundation in developing entrepreneurial competencies and networks in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We also have David Foti in here this evening. I believe he's joining us from Germany, but then again, he does travel a lot given the current circumstances with COVID. I may not have gotten his location correct. He will tell you about that later on. His co-founder and managing partner, i pronounced this correctly, Ulox. Um, he is also representing uh, Freiraum Ventures this evening as an investor, uh, serial entrepreneur. He's done some incredible work. We also have Edin Hukic. He's the CEO of Securitas BK joining us this evening. And you can see he has a very, very interesting career. Uh, he was one of the first individuals to say, yes, I do want to be involved and I want to support Bosnian startups. So a big thank you to Mr. Edin Hukic for joining us this evening from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Faris Zachina and his brother Reshad Zachina both come down with COVID symptoms and he's unable to join us this evening. I received a very late email from Faris and Reshad. Uh, this is un rather unfortunate, but we live in very, very uh, difficult times at the moment. And I do know that Fadis and Reshad are very big supporters of Bosnia Herzegovina Futures Foundation and the Innovation Nation program. And they will, of course, have an opportunity like uh, Mr. Amir Bukvic to actually look at the startups and invest into them post event. But unfortunately, they're not able to join us tonight. We have Mr. Kevin O'Connor joining us from the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Legatum Center. So the Legatum Center is an entrepreneurial center at MIT in Massachusetts. And uh, Kevin is very, very supportive of this program. We had some very interesting conversations a few weeks ago, and you will hear more from him and what the MIT Legatum Center is really doing. Uh, incredible background in this individual as well. We have Mr. Reshad Trustovic, who's the co-founder of Bosnia Herzegovina Futures Foundation. Uh, he's also an associate director at a large civil structural consultancy here in Australia and he'll be representing Chustovich Brothers Incorporated in the investing tonight. We have Mr. Samir Tseric, who's joining us from London this evening. He's the chairman of the Mayfair Investment Club, an alumni of George Soros Foundation. Incredible career, very, very diverse, and he's going to provide us some input this evening as well. We have Mr. Sanin Saracevic, the founder of CEO of Mastral, Mastral Solutions, and uh, Sanin also very, very supportive of startups, uh, obviously making some big moves across the world. As you can see, Mistral Technologies in Sarajevo, as many of you know, the company uh, also has branches in Amsterdam, Atlanta, uh, and Sarajevo and Mostar. 
And uh, some incredible results have been posted up by the company recently. They're growing into expansion. They've also been invested into by another organization uh, very recently. So very exciting times for Mistral Technologies and Mistral, Mistral Solutions, uh, depending on which US uh, foreign or Bosnian entity you look at. But Sunny, thank you very much for joining us this evening, and making time to support the students. We have Mr. Seo Jakic, and I do believe he's joining us from San Francisco uh, this evening, or should I say today in his, uh, his time. Seo Jakic is the founder and CEO of Echo Technology Solutions, uh, someone who's been operating in Bosnia for a very long time as well. He has a company there and he operates very swiftly across the world. And he's been supporting startups for a very long time. And I personally know that he's invested into a few in Bosnia. So Seo, thank you very much for again showing support and wanting to support Bosnian startups this evening. And uh, Mr. Zoran Pulic, who's joining us from Sarajevo this evening. He's the founder and director of the Mosaic Foundation, 2010 Schwab World Economic Forum Social Entrepreneur. Uh, many of you will know Zoran through his activity in impact investment in Bosnia and Herzegovina, supporting hundreds of small businesses across the country. Uh, various activities and programs, uh, very exciting work that they're doing. And we're very proud to have them on board as a partner. Again, uh, Mosaic Foundation was a partner of this program in 2019 in Banja Luka as well. And we look forward to working with them uh, throughout the next few years of um, that period. And lastly, of course, uh, last but not least, Mr. Ned Lomigora, who's also our keynote speaker this evening. Uh, he's also the founder and CEO of Cape Ann uh, technology. Uh, Infinity Mesh is the company uh, which is being run in Bosnia and Herzegovina as well. So we have both of them here. He's a board member at the MIT Enterprise Forum at New York uh, City. And he's invented a lot of stuff, but I'm going to tell him uh, to tell us more about that during his keynote. But he's also a former Winter Olympic athlete, which uh, makes a very interesting story for this evening. So Ned, very warm welcome to you as well. And uh, that will also lead us directly into uh, Nejad Lomigora, who's our keynote speaker for this evening. So I'm going to ask uh, Ned to briefly uh, switch over. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and provide Ned the opportunity 